Yo, 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 what's up, people? My name is Stanochi, and I'm back in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, hope you're all keeping well. Alright, so this project is complete, finally. Um, I did a few videos on, on it back in uh, January, I think it was, um, but then I put it on hold, waiting for update 4. Of course, update 4 is released, and the last part that was missing was the manufacturers, and that has now been added. So, after a lot of tweaking, and, um, well, a lot of organising logistical work and stuff like that, um, I think it's finally complete, mostly. It needs a little bit of balancing here and there. For those who didn't catch the other videos, basically, what this factory does is like a custom made to order a manufacturing kind of factory where you make custom production chains on the fly which can be changed relatively easily um, by turning on and off uh, spark splitters and um, that's kind of the whole idea about this and my first attempt at this was that factory way off in the distance you can see it. I did a video on that as well that uh, weird looking thing over there that was kind of a failure basically it's really inefficient it didn't work out really well um, but it was just learning I was just experimenting with the idea of this custom uh, made to order kind of modular production but this one is a lot lot better However, as I was doing this, I realized there's a much better way to do this now. Uh, I thought of a better way to do a bus system, and not only that, using these power switches, there is a, a much better way to do this. Now, obviously, of course, when I started this, it was before update 4, so the power switches weren't around. No problem, no problem. I guess I've got another project to work, to work on in the future, but not now, not now. These things take a lot of time to do, so I'll leave it for a while. But you know what? Let me shut up now, and let me get straight inside and see what's happening. All right, what I'll do is I'm going to start right here, which is uh, basically the control room where you... Uh, decide which items you want to produce by turning on the splitters on the left which will activate the machines way off on the right and this is basically a, a long corridor starting from one side of the factory going all the way across right to the other side and you just got some uh, hyper tubes lead taking you around to various parts of the, the base so the first section which is these uh, 12 uh, splitters is uh, what's controlling the constructors on the right there you've got a manual dispenser and I can take a few items from the dispenser underneath here I've left it open to give me visibility of the the, the belts that will be fixed feeding the machines once activated from the smart splitters here. If I want to produce, for example, wires, plates and screws, th these will correspond to uh, these uh, splitters here. So we got, uh, there we got our uh, iron plates and brass wires. So this will be iron plates and that will be the brass wires and so on and so on. So there we've got uh, copper plates and quick wire, and we've got copper, uh, copper sheets, sorry, and quick wire. So what the idea is that you, if you want to produce one of these items, you come here, turn on the top um, output and you just put any, any undefined overflow it doesn't matter which of those three you use they're all the same thing if you want to stop production you just put none and what did i put none on that was copper sheet so copper sheets is that one there which is this one which is that one and if i you can see it's not moving but if i come here and i put any undefined or anything like that the copper uh, ingots will start moving through which will head on to the constructors that are making the copper sheets alrighty that's the first section second section this is the assemblers and same principle exactly the same on the right side you've got manual dispenser and which the items on the right relate to the splitters on the left with the corresponding uh, belts underneath the only difference on this one though is I've got a horizontal conveyor coming across which just shows me the output of only the assemblers so not the constructors not the manufacturers just the assemblers so just by staying here I can turn machines on decide what items to produce and then check out the output just by looking at this conveyor belt here and you can see which items I've got turned on so I've got for example um, the first one which is reinforced plates and I'm producing stators and producing rotors which is that one and that one and uh, yeah same principle you come here you put any any undefined overflow whatever you put is fine and then the belt will start moving through and go on to the assemblers alrighty second section done and now we've got the section for the big boys the manufacturers yes yes the big boys well actually I don't know if they're the big boys anymore is the blenders are the big boys now aren't they whatever they are same principle exactly the same items on the right manual dispenser you can come in take a few off whatever's on the right corresponds to the split on the left which corresponds to the belt underneath and again same principle applies a horizontal conveyor belt coming across which just shows the output of only the manufactured items at the moment so what i've done is i've set up a, a thermal propulsion uh, production which is those ones there which uh, have to be the most difficult items in the game to produce right now and you see there's two more there which is this item right here now these thermal propulsion, um, wow, they, they need a lot of resources. So you need uh, modular engines, turbo motors, which in itself is pretty hard to produce, and cooling systems, which you, and uh, fused modular frames, both which are produced by um, blenders. What I've done um, is I've put a uh, one of these drone ports. So the idea is that later on, I'm assuming when tier nine and ten comes out, we will need some of these high-end items and can be taken away, which a drone is perfect for smaller quantities, quick delivery to other projects elsewhere. And what I've done is uh, same principle. 
where I've put a split, uh, smart splitter here and any items I put on the right output will come straight to the drum port which will be ready to take it out. Yes, yes. So that's basically what this factory is about. Now I've kind of covered it on the first two videos back in January. So if you want a little bit more information on that, which is basically what I've just said, uh, you can check those videos out. However, what I'm going to do on this video is, um, is I'm going to go through some of the logistical nightmare and the setup and the, the kind of the, 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 the feeding system, the bus system in the center and the machine room. This room is basically the control center. This is Houston. Uh, this is mission control. So on this base, what I've done is I've put roughly, I think about 30 lights. I've got about six downstairs with a train station, three, four, about 10 where the machines are. I don't know what we've got here, about 20, I don't know, whatever it is. And I've monitored that and they're using about three, two to 250 megawatts, uh, roughly. Now that's a lot of electricity. I've put a few lights elsewhere as well, like on the main areas, like on train stations. I, having a quick look at the power consumption of them by using a power switch, roughly 50 lights that I've got around uh, various bases in here is using about 200, 200 300 uh, megawatts. That's not an insignificant amount of electricity. Put a, a light control here as well, so I can change all the lights there. Okay, very cool. That looks all right, actually, isn't it, at night? Um, I've tried to play around with some softer lighting and uh, oh no, I'm with it. Oh, all right, yes, you get, we get disco going on here. Nice, cool, actually, very nice. Yes, yes, baby, we get disco going on. Oh, alrighty. Anyway, so on this base, what I've done is I've left the um, night mode off. So night mode basically just turns them off in the day. However, the, the only bad side I, I see about that is that if you put loads and loads of lights across all your bases, say like a few hundred, uh, that's gonna amount to at least, I don't know, a thousand megawatts. Um, I guess roughly what's going to happen when nighttime comes if you're close to your maximum uh, power output you're going to hear that dreaded sound so it's something to keep in mind if you've got night mode on you're going to get a, sp uh, a bigger energy spike at night if you've got a lot a lot of lights so like i said until i do my nuclear uh, factory i'm not going to be putting too many more lights Alrighty, it's time for me to shut up and get into the logistical nightmare that is happening in the rooms just over there actually before i get into that uh, some of you may be thinking that this all this all seems like very difficult and complicated and uh, rather pointless and to be honest it is <laughs> it is pointless um it's just for a bit of fun it really really is and the first system that i did especially I, I, I definitely admit it was uh, very inefficient. It was just a bit of fun. I'd been playing a long time at that particular time and I was just looking for different challenges. I already had other factories doing the traditional factory setups and all that kind of stuff. I had everything in storage, everything unlocked. And I enjoyed building. I'm a huge geek. I'm a huge geek. I love lo uh, logic and logistics and all this kind of stuff. So, and that factory away off in the distance was my first attempt. But as I mentioned, it wasn't very efficient. Uh, I liked it. It was cool, but just not very efficient. And that's why I got the idea of this one. So I wanted to do like this kind of like a custom production, but maybe it efficient make it actually practical and usable and worthwhile so this one the good thing about it is that all of the resources that come into the train station whatever production setup i do like like for example if i did supercomputer uh, production chain what i would do is turn on supercomputer i'll turn it off everything first then i would look at what supercomputers needs to produce all right, and it's computers, AI limiters, high-speed uh, connectors. So I'd go, I'd, I'd go and turn on high-speed connectors and computers and then high-speed connectors, I think, need circuit boards and so on and so on. I'll turn on only the relevant items that need to be produced. And all the, the conveyor work is already in place. So once I turn it on, the good thing about this particular factory is that all of the resources will only get funneled to the items that I've produced that are turned on by the smart splitters. No, nothing gets wasted at all. If then nothing's turned on, they'll go into storage. If storage is full up, then it goes into sinks. So it's very efficient in that sense. Nothing gets wasted. So in that sense, this is quite good. And also the good thing about this is that, for example, it's, in this game, it's rare that you always need every single item all the time. I can make another production chain, produce something else, then all the resources will get funneled exactly to that new production chain. So in that sense, I think it's pretty cool. I think. It's a waste of time, really, I know. I know. But it's cool. I enjoy it anyway. I'm a, I'm a big geek, really, so... I just enjoy these weird kind of challenges. What else, what else? And also just to quickly mention that this base only does constructors, assemblers, and manufacturers. And anything that can't be done by those three machines, for example, blenders, refineries, and uh, obviously smelters and foundries for bringing in ingots, all that kind of stuff is brought into the base. Alrighty, I did say I was gonna shut up, didn't I, and get on with the, the base tour. Let's do it. Alrighty, actually, what I'm gonna do is start here at the bottom where the trains are. I think that makes the most sense. And so we've got three trains, they come in, pretty frequently actually i mean these two they've got a very short distance only to there it's pretty quick i think they're doing like a couple minutes two and a half minutes so they're bringing a lot of goods very frequently this one takes a little bit longer because that one's going all the way to uh, over here but it goes like that and i think it stops there for a second that one takes a little bit longer maybe about four minutes i'm not sure exactly anyway so this middle train brings in all the ingots uh the base ingots from iron cotterium and um and what's it called iron cotterium copper and this one's bringing in the minerals which is the uh, uh 
silica, quartz and concrete, also plastic and rubber and the aluminium ingots and also the steel ingots. And this one here on the left is actually bringing a weird kind of selection of random goods from the other factory. So it's kind of like this is like excess goods from the other factory that I had that are just going into sinks. So I thought instead of throwing them all away, I just thought I'd bring them in because like I said, that last base that I did, the modular factory, a lot of items just get wasted. Um, so I thought what I'll do is I'll bring them here instead. I can use them here, but I don't actually need it because all those items that are there can be produced by the ingots, the raw materials that are put in by these two trains. And as I said, these two trains come in pretty frequently with a lot of goods. So anyway, it's there. It helps. It doesn't hurt anyway. Let's wear that way. Uh, alrighty, let's head on to the floor above. Alrighty, so heading on to the first floor above, which is uh, distributing, organizing into a temporary buffer storage for the goods that come in by the train. So this is the train, like I said, bringing the random goods from the other modular custom factory. And those go into this temporary storage. Each item has a, a triple higher, uh, like a buffer storage. That's not for proper storage, that's just a buffer for the machines upstairs. And the rest is just organizing and distributing, load balancing, all the various goods that come in, as you can see them all there, the ingots, the minerals. And if the, uh, the buffer storage is full up, what happens? They go into sinks. And I actually needed 12 sinks in order to keep up because if all the machines are turned off, the amount of goods that are coming in, as you can see, and I've got a lot of machines turned on now upstairs, and, and there's still, all, all the sinks are nearly busy. And at the end here we've got a little storage area for the goods that are produced by the machines upstairs so anything that's produced by the assemblers or manufacturers will come into storage in here and this uh, actually kind of reminds me of a prison don't know why anyway and at the end here we've got a uh, hyper tube that leads you back to the mi mission control area as i said down below what i was planning to do was add a couple train stations eventually that would lead take out the goods that are produced by this building and into onto another factory or something like that and as nothing's leaving right now i haven't built the train station so it's just an empty area so th this is only items produced by the assemblers and manufacturers i'm not storing items that are produced by the constructors because they already have a huge amount of uh, storage in this uh temporary buffer storage here along with this storage and that storage is plenty to be honest i found that i've never really needed that much storage anyway if you need more you can always produce more okay so moving on up to the next floor so on the floor just above as you've seen this leads to this area and the hyper tube from the train leads you right out here and then going on to here is where we get the bus system Alrighty, so where do where to start uh, things get a little bit more complicated uh, and a lot more messy here that's for sure um all right so this is the bus system that is basically um well, it's a bus system um, that I'm using to kind of like uh, distribute the goods onto the machines. So uh, from downstairs where we got the, the storage we just came from, they head on up and they join the bus system here, uh, half on that side and half on that side. And then you've got these two rows of uh, conveyors that go all the way to the end. And then this one on this side loops around and heads back. We'll, we'll go there now. And then coming around to the end of the conveyor, that side loops around. And then on this side, is where the um, the items are caught off from the um, from the conveyors, and then it will head on onto the machines. So all of these kind of splitters or mergers and conveyor lifts are just going up and down, up and down, picking off what they need from the the bus system on the left and right, which kind of like uh, heads off. I don't know if I can get there. There we go. Onto this system here, which you would have seen from the main uh, the main area, which is where like the floor is there just above and so that's where you can see all these items they're coming into here and it's just a very messy like a proper spaghetti uh, maze of conveyor belts and uh, splitters and I try to keep it organized but um, there's just too much going on so I'd, at the end I just thought wherever I could connect something I'll connect it but yeah so that's the bus system it does the job and and then this is coming towards the the simpler side and this is, this is heading towards where the constructors are so here it's a lot more simpler as you can see it only needs to call off the ingots and yeah, some of the brass wires and plastic but there's only one item to call off on this side because it's just the constructors which only have one input of course and as we come back to the this middle part which is where the assemblers are we're calling off two items obviously because assemblers have two inputs and why is that there oh dear have i missed something no, if that's it, stuff like that makes me really worried because if I've done that mistake there, can you imagine how many, oh gosh, I've probably got so many mistakes here. But you know what, I've tested it, it, it seems to work, so God knows, anyway. But anyway, continuing on. Um, so yeah, this is where we get further on towards the, um, uh, where is it, the, uh, the manufacturers where we're calling off four items, obviously four inputs for a manufacturer and um, yeah. It's messy, but that's what that is. That's the bus system. And so the items get called off the bus system, as I said, and they'll go underneath the floor here and they'll head back here to the area where well, this is the behind the wall of the, um, of the what's it called? The, the programmable splitters that are on that wall, this area here. 
So this is the programmable splitters that we choose when to turn the machines on and off. And that's just behind. And then they head on up. And then when they head on up, they get onto these conveyor belts at the top part, which takes them then further on to the machine area, which we'll go to now. So that's kind of the central area. That's where I guess most of the hard work is done. Um, yeah, it's messy. I mean, I tried to keep it organized, but it just comes to a point where you think, you know what, as long as I can connect something, that's fine. I'm good, that's good enough for me. Anyway, let's move on to the factory now. So these are all the belts that I've got turned on. So each one is corresponding to one item that I've turned on to produce. And these items over here are the manufacturers. In the middle here, we've got the assemblers and at the end, there we have the um, the constructors of course alrighty now we get on to the uh, to the army of machines alrighty so we've got uh, 240 constructors on three different levels and then moving on to the middle section we've got 180 assemblers again on three different levels and this is the part that I've added recently which is 60 manufacturers uh, 33 on the bottom and 27 on the top and um, yeah basically it's so all those machines they come through and they'll head off, off to their respective uh, machine to get produced into whatever we've assigned them to produce. Now, this is where it got kind of tricky because um, I had to decide pre-hand how many items of each uh, I should produce, like how many constructors I should assign to steel pipes, how many should I should assign to you know iron plates and so on. And the same for assemblers. And then first I had to kind of work that out roughly, how many of each machi machine should be assigned to each item. And that wasn't easy, complicated. It, that was actually really complicated. That gave me a headache, a bloody headache. Anyway, uh, it works, I think. Uh, I have tested it, it does work, honestly. I have tested it, I've done every single production chain and one hour at a time and it seems to work just fine so um, it needs a little bit of balancing here and there I've done most of it but I'll do a little bit more as well if you turn every item on in the main area if you produce every single item it, that all these items uh, all the machines can produce things won't work great it will work at probably about 30 to 50 percent efficiency so it's not designed to turn every single machine on there are 480 machines and there's not that much resources coming into the base to feed 480 machines all the time this is not what i planned this base to be so as i said it's a custom made to order couple production chains at a time and considering how many machines are in this area uh, i did pay extra attention i don't know why but I, I, for some reason when i do machines i like to keep them as ultra clean uh, that's a shame about the bus system it ruins it completely but considering this like i said 480 machines in a relatively compact space and the logistical nightmare that had to be organized. I did mention, uh, I did think of a new way to do this. I should just do what everyone else does, just do simple, just do mass production, produce like 20,000 ingots and then produce like uh, thousands of one item and then move on and do the same again for another item. But for some reason, I, I like to um, make myself suffer a little bit and uh, make it complicated. I don't know why I do enjoy it. I do, I, I'm complaining, but I do enjoy it. Just ignore me. Also, another thing that I've realized with this system is that it's got a huge ramp up time. It, it literally can take up to half, half an hour, one hour to fully get going, depending on if you're doing like uh, one of the high end tiers, like I was doing thermal propulsion units with turbo motors and oscillators and all that kind of stuff. It, it took a good hour for it to really get at full speed because uh, there's so much conveyor work to fill and machines to fill up because each machine has to literally fill up to max capacity before the next machine starts to get items. But other than that i'm really happy it works really really well uh, it's not a mass production uh, it's not going to produce uh, like a uh, thousand or hundreds of supercomputers or hundreds of uh, oscillators or hundreds of those new uh, thermal propulsion units or modular engines and all that kind of stuff it, it does quite a few of assembler produced items and loads of the constructor items but when you get into the manufactured items the average item has about three, two three four maybe five manufacturers per item so it, you know it's not going to produce huge amounts of items at any one time but like i said it works really well otherwise and uh yeah anyway all right so what i did mention on the last video that what i'll do is i'll upload my save game uh, so if, if anyone's interested i don't know i did get a, a couple requests uh back when i was playing satisfactory before update 4 um so what i'll do is i'll upload the save as well i'll put a link in the description and you can check out the monstrosities that i've built around the, the map and how i've ruined this world i'll save it with me standing yeah so in this factory and then you'll be here so when you load you'll be at the train station and you've got this one to take you up into the main uh, area where the, all the bitters are and this one will take you to the other main factory uh, which is um, the factory on top of a mountain which are the two main factories to be honest and uh, you've got access to both uh, from here and I'll, I'll save it right here as well I hope you've enjoyed the, the little uh, base tour ridiculous bus system in this uh, ridiculous project of mine anyway thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and maybe I'll catch you again soon